Was it fish they kept in there or a nice bit of duck? Well, if you're thinking that, you're cold. The answer is ice. 200 years ago, before global warming, a lake like this would have frozen over every winter. Ice is useful stuff, and the challenge was storing it all year round without it melting. Andy's head gardener here at Stourhead. Now, Andy, this is a big lake it with is. a lot of ice. It is indeed. How many people would it take in the old days to get all this ice in the bucket? We believe in the 18th century it was about 70 staff. 70 staff? 70 staff, yeah, how 70. Many, how many have you got now? Well, there's six of us full-time now. Six? we better get a move on. <laughs> certainly, certainly. Now, what's all this straw about? Tell it's to insulate the layers of ice and to stop them sticking together and forming into one big block. Oh, well, that, well that's logical, yeah. really. That should just about do us. Great. Let's take it on. Ferrying this lot would have been a tricky business. Right. <laughs> 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 Well, I can now appreciate what the workers went through to get their frozen loads up to the ice house. There you go. You got a torch? I have, I have. If you look just as we come in, right. on the wall, there's some initials and what have you. And there's also tally marks. Oh, tally marks? Yeah, there's some on both sides. A tally mark, each mark represents um, uh, a barrel load, I imagine. That's yeah. it, so it gives you an idea of the amount they're having to bring in. Hey, I need my name on here somewhere now. <laughs> There were dozens of marks showing the huge number of loads that must have been carried here. Wow. Well, how much ice is this going to take? The chamber could store enough ice to fill a swimming pool, keeping the mansion supplied right through until the following winter. It's a great bit of engineering. How many things like this are there in the country? They believe there's about, about 2,000 left across the country. But if you think most big houses would have had a, this sort of structure, because ice was quite a luxury in those days. How many bricks thick is this wall, Andy? About two bricks thick. And that's enough to keep it all cool? It certainly is, because it's buried into the ground. So it takes advantage of the ground's coolness. Incredible. What a lot of work. It is indeed. And all I know about it. <laughs> So what would they have used all this ice for? Well, it would have been used during, during the warmer months to preserve food in the kitchens, dairy products, meats, that sort of thing. Some of it would have been used to make desserts, um, and some of it would have been used in drinks. Now that sounds like good sense. Who would have thought ice was one of the finer things in life? Cheers, Andy. Cheers. The benefits of your own ice house were brought within reach of every home in the 20th century. There was no need to wait for winter when the refrigerator became common. In 1928, the discovery of man-made refrigerant chemicals called CFCs made modern fridges possible, and today's models are remarkably similar to those of the 1930s, apart from the Queen Anne legs trying to make it into a piece of furniture. But it was really just a functional machine, and inside it looked exactly like a modern fridge. To make a continuous cooling system, the refrigerator is a closed loop process, and it works like this. There's our food in the middle of the fridge, like that, a bit of a deformed chicken there, and it radiates heat. And that heat is absorbed by an evaporator, which is the same process as the aerosol. When you spray an aerosol, it feels cold. That's because aerosols also use CFC-type chemicals, which actually suck in heat when they evaporate. As that heat goes in there, the evaporator feels very, very cold, and hot gas comes out of the evaporator, round to a compressor, pushes all that stuff together, compresses all that gas, and pushes that round to a radiator, which is like this one on the back, where the heat radiates out and leaves it all condensed as cold liquid. The old cooling machine, the 1930s model, has got the radiator right on top there, like a big hat box, but this is at the back there. So there's a little symbol of the sun to show that all the heat's been radiated. And then that comes out there as cold liquid. And that liquid comes round there and into the system again and absorbs even more heat. So all going on continuously, unlike the aerosol. But how does cold keep food fresh? 
That's because it's another world in there. Inside your freezer is a world where everything happens very, very slowly. And just as the cold slows down your body, it slows down the bugs that make your food go off. And really, inside your freezer is like an alien planet where time virtually stands still. And this meat is hanging in suspended animation, just waiting for the day we defrost it and bring it back to life. Well, almost. I like ice in the sun. No one's invented a machine to reverse time like that, but we can shift time by freezing seasonal foods to eat all year round. Until the fridge breaks. It's almost beyond comprehension. I'm here in Fridge City. I'm surrounded by piles and piles of fridges. And that's because it's cheaper to buy a new fridge than it is to fix an old one. And fridges come from all over Great Britain here to South Wales to be recycled because European law says that we have to get rid of those harmful CFCs that damage the ozone layer. It's balmy, really, isn't it? This plant recycles four fridges a minute. It's like an industrial roller coaster, but it's no fun for the fridges. First, the dangerous CFC refrigerant is sucked out, but the foam insulation contains more CFCs, so the whole cabinet is then pulled apart. The materials are separated out using high melting temperatures and very powerful magnets. It costs councils about £10 a fridge to dispose of them like this, and most of the materials can be reused. It takes the steel from 2,000 fridges to fill that skip in two days. And when you've got rid of all that steel, you've got lots of non-ferrous metal. That's aluminium and copper to you and me, and one or two other bits and pieces as well. And all that plastic foam that insulates the fridge is reduced to this fine powder. And right over here, the CFCs coming through this pipe from the recycling plant into these big canisters, and then it's all taken away and harmlessly burnt off. Now, this is a big, impressive plant, but recycling itself is not new. <laughs> 